just going to go ahead and record this uh, quick video on Weeble Desktop for you. So if, let's see. First thing you want to do is um, go to the page on the on the left hand side. There's a bunch of options here. Go to the custom page, and then what you'll do is you'll click the plus sign right here. Um, go ahead and open a blank layout. And then if that widgets thing isn't up, then you're going to click on the briefcase icon, which, which is, um, the add widgets page. And then this is where we're going to create our layout. So first thing we want to add is the chart, right? We'll just add a nice big chart for us to look at. Um, change the settings however you want. I, I don't use the grid. Um, I don't need this indicator and other than that, it's looking pretty good. Next thing we want to add is the options chain. We can change the settings on this however we want. I think the default it's showing six strikes. We can change this to like 20. Um, let's see, you can click this icon right here, this little option items line customize which items are there. Uh, I don't need last, I don't need percent change. I don't even need this. Um, implied volatility is good. Open interest is okay. Maybe add volume. And you can rearrange these, All right? I think I'll move Delta up here next to the bid and ask. So it's right there next to it. Maybe move data up there too, and then volume up. And that should be good for the option chain. Next, what we want to add is, let's see, I think we're good on this page. We're going to go to the trade tab on the add widgets. First thing we want to add here, and again, you can move these around by the way, like it doesn't have to be laid out in this order or anything like that. Like we could put the options here we can make the chart smaller. You can add another chart right here. So like if you wanted to do, um, let me move this stuff off, indicator off. If you wanted to have your daily chart right here and then your five minute chart here, so you can watch both, right? At the same time, rather than switching back and forth. Um, but I just, we'll keep it at one. So anyways, back to the trade tab. Next thing we wanna add is active trade. So this is where we're gonna have our buttons to quickly enter and exit positions. Um, by default, it has buttons to buy stock or shares, right? We can uncheck this box to remove the order confirmation window. But what we wanna remove is these buttons. So we'll go to active trade settings. Under place order for stocks, we're gonna delete the buy buttons and the sell buttons. And then we're gonna add the buttons for options. So what we, ideally want to do is either buy the market price, sell the market price, um, buy the ask and sell the bid. And you can add other ones if you want. So if you wanted to do the mid price, you can, or if you wanted to, to do a custom, custom order, you can. So like you can put a limit order to buy at the mid and then you can offset it. So like if, let's say your your spread was 10 cents, um, the mid, you can put the mid price plus a few cents to get closer to the ask, but not, not quite at the ask. Um, I prefer to just keep it simple, put these four buttons there. You can change how many contracts you wanna buy this button, make sure it's on the little coins. 
So that's how many you're going to be buying. You can make the default. You can change the default in the settings page. So if you wanted to make it the default five contracts, you would change it here, 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 and here. So now the default is five. Not sure why that one says six. Maybe I messed that up. I did. Okay. And then this just shows how many orders you have in or how many you have in your current position. Not really necessary. You can move this up. If you have the space, you can leave it like that. It's whatever. Next thing we want to add is the price ladder. And since my screen is kind of small, I'll just kind of squeeze it in right here. And I'll actually move this up to give the ladder more room. We want to uncheck this box for order confirmations to be skipped. That way you can click right on here and it'll fill you instantly. We want to change the ladder settings. Um, you can change show order settings to take it off. You could probably leave that one on. That way you can change how many contracts you want to buy. Uh, you can check off the volume. And basically what this ladder is useful, useful for is, I'll show you in a minute actually. Last couple things you might want to add is maybe your orders. Put this here. So this will show any orders that are pending or getting filled or anything like that. You can add positions. This will show any positions you're in. Um, and by the way, yeah, if you didn't notice what I just did, you can move these anywhere, right? But you can overlap them as well and they'll be tabbed. So like if you drag this on top of the orders thing, you can have them to where you can switch between them. So it takes up less space. Another one, good one to add is um, order entry. This way, if you were to click on an option, it'll pull it up in the order entry if you wanted to place an order that way. And I'll just put this here as well. So that way we have positions, orders, order entry, all right here in this one box. Uh, let's see what else. You can add a watch list. Down here, maybe. looking good don't really need any of this for what I'm doing personally and then yeah we're good to go so I think what I'll do is you click you can click this button here to set it to a group so that it'll sync them together so like we can set this to a nine set this to nine and then you can click on names in your watch list like if I click Tesla Tesla It'll add Tesla to the chart. If I want to go back to SPX, it goes to SPX or Walmart. Anyways, you get the idea. And then, of course, we want to do the same thing here. So what we'll do is change this group to one, change this group to one, and then same thing for the ladder. And we want to make sure these are separate, and I'll show you why. Because what you want to do is say you're on the SPX chart over here. What you'll do is type in SPX on the chain. And then from here, when let's say tomorrow or on the next trading day, which would be the 20th, you want to buy a call. What you would do is you'd find the call you want to buy. Let's say we're going to be buying the 4,400 call. So you would click not 
on the bit, not on the bid and not on the ask, but you'd click on any other one, like you'd click on the Delta. Cause if you click the bid or the ask, it's going to open the order entry page. But what we want is to add it to the chain, um, the active trade and the ladder. So if you click on the Delta right here, did you see how it changed that? Watch, I'll change it to something else. We'll change this to SPX or SPY rather. We'll go back to the SPX chain. What's happening? Okay, there we go. So we go back to the chain. Notice it's still on SPX over here, but when we click on the delta of the strike that we want to buy, it changes it to the 4,400 call. Notice the price matches the option price. So then what you can do is when you're ready to buy a call and it shows, this is the mid price typically. Notice it's like right in the middle of the bid and the ask. So you can either buy, um, and you should be able to, I think if you change it to limit, no, I'm not sure why it's not doing it, but you should be able to place a buy stop order. Anyways, what you would want to do typically is just try and maybe fill right at this price that it's highlighting as the mid or slightly higher. Um, this is a nice way to trade to get into trades quickly. And then what you can do once you're in a trade is you can like scroll down here. And once you're in a trade, the sell limit thing will change to sell stop. So you can quickly set stop losses like this, as well as quickly exit trades by clicking over here once you're in one. Another thing you can do is this is now tied to that 4,400 call. So if you wanted to quickly enter by push, pushing one of these buttons, you can buy at the market price or buy at the ask. Same thing with selling. Once you're in a position and you want to take profits, these buttons are there for convenience. And yep, that's pretty much it. That's how I've set mine up. Um, so right here, what I would like to say, you buy the call, you can see your position here, how much you're up or down. You can also see the current price and it'll show your entry price right around here somewhere. So you can monitor your position, enter and exit the trade and monitor the chart all on one page. And that's pretty much it.